on today's episode, we get to the bottom of this. The bottom of what? The horrible injustice that has been done to us. Injustice? What? The Guild Wars 2 auction house is still down! Yes, but what does that have to do with Max? You can't even play well, that. All that and more is coming up next on this episode of the Infinite Loop Show. Hello, welcome to the Infinite Loop Show episode, what, what is this, 32? 32. <laughs> it's like, I'm all convoluted. I'm a mess. I had to buy a new computer. Yep, the pro just couldn't last until the, the update next year. <laughs> the pro's video card uh, died, and uh, I'm not really surprised because I was uh, getting these errors. If you go on the Apple support forums, there are these people that were getting... Um, NVIDIA OpenGL errors for years, actually. And I guess it was the sign of a failing card because it died. Sounds uh, like it. <laughs> can't boot into the machine. We'll talk about that later. There is much more important stuff to talk about. We have some things to say, yes. What do we have to say? You want to well, start? You start. <laughs> All right. Well, much to... I don't know. I guess... Much to some people's surprise, this this trial, the Apple Samsung trial, has been up and down and, and kind of all over the place. Um, but last week, uh, the jury finally came up with a verdict uh, saying, am I frozen? No. That's what the jury said. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, and they, they went into deliberation, what, Thursday, early Friday, and then... Again, okay, well, it's going to be another two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Bam! Friday evening, done, decided. Apple wins. Yep, and <laughs> I jokingly said that the reason why it didn't take so long is because they wanted to have uh, their weekend. Yeah, Get well, yeah, a lot Friday. of people were saying that. That you know, it's it's obvious that Judge Lucy Co was really tired of this whole charade and i think probably the jurors were too samsung really kind of drug it out with um the monotony of um you know patent to uh, just law in general and i think really put everybody to sleep and they were ready to go home yeah but, um yeah all right the jury found in favor of apple um uh so Eight devices were found infringing by Samsung. Mm -hmm. No infringements by Apple. <laughs> uh, an Apple spokesperson, or I think may possibly a C-level executive, was quoted as saying, this is the worst scenario for us. Um, penalties and damages being charged to Apple, zero dollars. <laughs> penalties and damages having to be paid by Samsung, a whopping one million fifty one one billion, billion I'm sorry one billion fifty one million eight hundred and fifty five thousand dollars that that just blew my mind I was watching this um, <laughs> I was watching this as it was I was away from the house so I'm on my phone and I'm on the, I think it was the verge live feed yeah could, I was too on my phone I was on the train and and kind of trying to keep up with this as it played out yeah and I I'm just reading how the jury said that Samsung is guilty, guilty, guilty. And basically, in, in some instances and not others. But then the uh, the number came, the damages, $1 billion. And I went, oh, my God. That's a yeah. hell of a lot of money. And it is. But it's not, you know, it's not like Samsung can't pay it either. So No, they can't. Uh it, it's. I guess it turns out that <clears throat> like I was watching the whole cell phone market after the iPhone came out. I mean, I was interested in it obviously beforehand. I've talked before. I'm maybe not necessarily on this show, but I've talked about how phones were clunky, and here we are in the 21st mm -hmm. century, and we have these phones, and you're still having to like. Yeah, you can have the slide out keyboards, but most people still have to press like five 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 three two seven 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 you know to, to type a text message oh uh -huh. and then the iphone comes out and um and what happened i had a i had reviewed a palm pre for cnet years ago and um 
and and I have to say the 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 Palm Pre operating system was pretty badass. I liked it. Had some some issues. It was a 1.0. But Palm at least tried to do their own thing. Yeah. And that's what I respect them for is that they didn't really succeed but they did their best and I think that that WebOS they did a really good job with. Um mm-hmm. Rim basically said, "What is this iPhone? We're going to do our own thing anyway." Mm-hmm. And and then Samsung comes along, and I guess they said, "Well, we can take a shot in the dark and do as close as we can to Apple." It's sort of like skating that that line, skating the fence before mm-hmm. going over it. But I guess the jury decided that they skated a little too close, and they paid the price for it. Yeah. Um- well, I think we've all heard that email now that's pretty infamous yeah. that um, saying that they need to really, you know, kind of go after Apple, that Apple's leading the way in the market now and they need to, you know, hit them pretty hard and go after that competition and, and kind of model themselves after that, which, you know, they did. And it seemed like they maybe. You know, I mean, I don't think Android was really possibly not trying to copy Apple so much, but Samsung definitely was with their overlay, and that's where really all the uh, infringements were mm-hmm. with the the bounce back and the um, double tap to zoom, and you know that's all part of their touch whiz overlay, and so that's that had a lot to do with it, and then also their hardware um, is very similar in looks, but um, yeah, uh, kind of surprising though. What was not found to be infringing, the Galaxy Tab, mm-hmm. was, the jury decided was not infringing on the iPad, which is <laughs> surprising because Apple actually previously won you know, injunctions against the Samsung uh, Tab sales because it was found to be to too be similar to the yeah, iPad. Yeah, that's true. I, I found that to be surprising also. but So now they're actually going to go back to court on September 20th to decide damages for Samsung that Apple should be needs to pay because of that injunction. Oh, well, no. That Which, no, it's fair as fair, I suppose. No, I am not I, a lawyer. <laughs> yes, no. Nor do I pretend to be. But mm-hmm. um here's what I've been thinking. It's like let's say you're the first person to make a toaster. At some point other people are going to make toasters. A toaster mm-hmm. is a physical object. A mm-hmm. phone is a physical object, but the difference between a toaster and a phone is that, um, well, I shouldn't really say a difference, but but a is toaster, there only one difference? No, no, no. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that a toaster does a, a specific thing in a specific way, and you uh-huh. can improve on it, sure. But I think at some point there there seems to be just some ubiquitous ubiquitous. I can't even talk today. Uh, a way of 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 toasting bread. That uh-huh. that can't be changed. Right. The coils have to be heated. Well, how you well, heat the coils may be different. It's but. a very simple object. You're comparing like a very very simple object to you know with a very dedicated function oh. to an object that is far more complicated with multiple functions. Oh, oh no, I I totally understand it, and I agree with you. But I think at some point what happens is when something becomes ubiquitous, I can talk now. Um, mm-hmm. Can you patent that? I suppose you well, could. Well, that's kind of like the um, the App Store argument, at where Apple was trying to patent the name, um, or I guess put a trademark on the name App Store, and mm-hmm. they found that to be too generic. Um, but you know, which is weird now is I see a lot of um, third party vendors, app manufacturers, referring to, um, you know, places to buy stuff like. You can find it on the Google Play Store or the App Store. Mm-hmm. It's just the App Store. It's not Apple App Store. It's not iOS App Store. It's App Store. Yeah. So that whole argument of being saying it, App Store is too generic, but here we are with vendors and everybody just referring to App Store, and we all know, well, it's the iPhone App Store. It's yeah, the Mac yeah. App Store. It's Apple's App Store. It's not Google's App Store. It's not Microsoft's App Store. So it really... It's it's almost become like Kleenex now, where it is exactly. That's what I mean. Is like for example the uh, the slide to refresh, 
which was started mm-hmm. by um, 8-Bits, ATE bits uh, for the Twitter app on the iPhone. That is mm-hmm. now patented by Apple. What I'm saying in, in the... That in sounds the, like something they just didn't get around to doing and now, you know, well, since y- Apple was quick to patent it. Yeah, yeah, but what I'm, my point being is that with the toaster analogy, what I'm saying uh-huh. is... Um, the, the the slide to refresh doesn't necessarily have to be a, a function of your phone. That's what I'm saying is that the the there was the rounded no, rectangles argument. What you're saying. <clears throat> it's not you, in the phone's OS, but it's within the apps, and that's up I, to the apps manager right. or developer's discretion to either implement that or not. It's yeah. not Apple's job to block it in there. I guess they could block it in the SDK, but. Yeah, because what happens is, all right, for example, let's say you have a car, right? All cars have a steering wheel and four wheels and engine and brakes and all that. There are things that make your car different than somebody else's car. There are things that make your phone different than somebody else's phone. And and I think that's where the confusion lied, lay, lay, <laughs> uh, with, with this whole issue is if you're going to make a phone that's fine. Go ahead and make a phone. But if you're going to make it a little too close to Apple, people are going to get confused and Apple is going to start losing market share. They have to protect their intellectual property. And then people, I, I love this, like the arguments on the internet from people are like, well, Apple doesn't innovate. Really? Where would we be right now? Do you think Samsung they was going to come innovate? up with this? They don't innovate? Okay. Oh, yeah. It's great. You yeah. listen to the Fandroids on Google Plus and they're like, Apple doesn't innovate. They litigate. Like, Really? Do, well, do you that's hear this? a cute rhyme, but yeah, you know. it is. But I like some of these fan droids to work for Apple for ten years on one product, day in and day out, without holidays, like like we all do, and then tell me that Apple doesn't innovate. I, yeah, right. Look at the Mac Pro now, and look at the PowerBook ten years ago, sure. or more than ten years ago. You know, <laughs> and tell me that there isn't like massive innovations. Mm. I mean. From the the cosmetic to you know what's inside to the freaking you know I mean the the stupid asymmetrical fan for God's sakes mm-hmm. in the new Retina MacBook Pro um, everything you know they they they're constantly improving and constantly sloughing off the old and and forcing people to move forward mm-hmm. and so I I understand how Apple could look evil from the outside but. As, well, they look evil because yeah, they're they're suing people that are making products similar to theirs. But like you said, the one thing I th- I don't think a lot of people pay attention to is it it's because it's probably primarily because of the patents. When you patent something, you have to protect it or you lose the patent. Exactly. And so if they don't, I mean, it's not like oh, Apple just wants more money. They want to protect. I mean, obviously, they want to protect their intellectual property for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. You know, blood, sweat, and tears probably went into that. Yeah. But from a legal standpoint, they need to protect their intellectual sure. property or it's not going to be their property anymore. Listen, um, speaking as someone who um, who had some stuff stolen from them, this goes back to around 95, 96. I had somebody actually take the entire resource for Remember when we had resource and data forks on Mac applications? Somebody took uh, my entire resource fork on on my app, copied it, wrapped his app around it, used my resources, and put it out as his own. And the reason why I knew that it was mine is because I had some unused resources in there with little notes of mine, and they were Mm -hmm. in his app. I'm like, so I've had code stolen from me. I've had friends who've had actual artwork ripped off and sure. stolen. Um, it happens all the time. I, you um, know, I, should, I just thought of this. I find it ironic. Do you remember on Google Plus about mm, maybe six months ago when people were all up in arms about uh, making sure that you give the 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 right, you say where you copied a, a picture from. Remember that there was a big thing. It was about six months ago where everybody in Google Plus was... On Google was, Plus? Yeah, for about two weeks, if you posted a picture of something, 
you had I remember to... the 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 sharing thing yeah. you know about people getting up in arms about not getting credit for reshares and crap but exactly. not the, the picture thing yeah yeah and and so now these very same people that were fighting the fight so that um the 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 people that created the artwork get the right recognition are now saying that apple is the bad guy when they're in fact protecting the very they're thing the that they're arguing thing. against yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Anyways, all right. So moving on. <laughs> moving on. What's with this Java zero day thing? I heard about it. I have. This is not a very important it. thing. Um, okay. Again, another Java loophole vulnerability. This one is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Well, a because it's in Java seven, which is new, and so this vulnerability is new, wide open. Like Java, it just came out, and it's already. Um, there's already a loophole that wasn't found, and, and it's wide open. But this affects, um, because it's a, in a browser, it affects everybody. Windows, mm-hmm. Mac, Linux, everybody. Um, so, But you for the time being, until um, either Oracle or uh, otherwise, you know, Apple pushes down or Windows pushes down an update, which hasn't happened yet, um, you can kind of protect yourself against this by either uninstalling Java if you're on a Windows machine or and disabling Java in your browser preferences if you're yeah. on the Mac. Um, until, like I said, until some kind of update is pushed down because this, it, somebody can root your computer through it. It is really? a huge vulnerability. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's... I know there are some people that... It's bigger than the flashback thing that we saw before for the Mac. There are some people that depend on Java for their business. Um, Yeah, I know. We do at at my work, you know, all of our, a lot of our finance and BI stuff, it's all Oracle and it's all running on Java. But we um, were stuck at Java 6 update... 23 i think okay. um so we're not our infrastructure isn't up to java 7 yet and this is on java 7 so um in any case you know huge deal like i said um i can't really speak to the um the intricate details of how um a hacker could get through but just know that it's a loophole big enough to have your system rooted mm-hmm. so you know, if you like that happening, I mean, <laughs> by all means. Sure. Uh, um, but if you like having your computer, um, I've disabled Java on both my laptop and my iMac mm-hmm. at work. Um, and so, yeah. All right. So if you want to know how to disable Java, uh, let's see. In Safari, um, you click Safari in the, uh, in the main menu. Safari preferences. Yep. And then security tab, and then uncheck the uh, enable Java uh, checkbox. Firefox, select tools. Yeah, that's on Mountain Lion. On Lion or later, um, under Safari preferences, it's actually under the advanced tab. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, In Firefox, select tools from the main menu. You click on add-ons, and then select the disable button next to any of the Java plugins. Uh, Google Chrome... Things are a little complicated. You have to type Chrome colon slash slash plugins in the address bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chrome is superior. Uh, then click on the disable button below any Java plugins. So that's how you would disable it. Uh, I haven't yet because I I just found out about this today. I've been busy, so this is important, I suppose. But but the thing is, is like even if you leave it on, I mean, a, a website or, or something has to have to. Ha- it has to ha- first. You have to have Java Seven, and then where you're going has to have this vulnerability in the first place. It's not like somebody's going to go to your IP address and hack your computer, right? Well, I don't know because they were saying that it doesn't require any downloads or anything like that. It is a black hole, oh. so I'm assuming. Yeah, you don't need to really do anything stupid on your part to mm-hmm. instigate this. Like generally, yeah, you need to go to a certain page or download a certain thing. Right. Um, Did you disable it on your system? Hole. 
Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I disabled it on both my work and my um, oh, yeah. my home system. Oh, I guess I'll um, do it now. Enable Java turned off. There you go. Uh, yeah, this article that I have linked in the show notes doesn't go into particulars either. But, um, well, here, let's say zero day threat. Um, So, yeah, a zero-day threat essentially means that there's no fix right now. Yeah. Um, uh, there's, yeah, they're just not all right. so, showing anything good. Hmm. Uh, you've been to an Apple store where you can check out on your own, correct? Yeah, I believe it's uh, enabled for all Apple stores. For all Apple stores. Well, one thing that I always wondered is what happens if the system doesn't work? You think it does. And you walk out with an item. Yeah, because it's just, it seems like, so we're talking about the Easy Pay checkout mm-hmm. app for Apple stores. You scan the barcode with your iPhone um, camera and you pay, you know, with a with your, I think your iTunes account mm-hmm. or whatever card you have connected through that, through your Apple account. Um, and then you just walk out. It seems almost like just too easy to shoplift and possibly too trusting on Apple's part. And I know a lot of people who have, I haven't personally done this, but um, I know people who have, and they're like, I always feel like I'm shoplifting, but you know, it works and whatever. And I walk out, but apparently it is easy to screw up and they are very, very vigilant about the system. Here's what happened. Somebody, some kid went to an Apple store to buy headphones and well, he, he didn't just go to buy headphones. He went because he had a Genius Bar appointment. So he went, he used right. the Easy Pay app to on the headphones to buy them. Then he asked for a bag. They gave it to him. Then he sat down at the Genius Bar, did his whole thing there with his uh, MacBook Pro. And then as he's going to leave, he was approached just right by the door by a security guard and a manager. <laughs> now, here's... This is what I don't understand. All right, the, the the way the story works is that he he actually went to pay, but the payment didn't go through. Now, whether or not he did something wrong, he didn't complete the transaction. Yeah. So he went to prove to them that he did, and he brings out his phone and brings up the app, and it's still at the checkout button, but he hadn't actually finished yeah. the transaction. So my... and they didn't even give him a chance either. They just threw him in jail. They called the cops and threw him in jail for the night. Over a pair of headphones. A guy comes in with a MacBook Pro and they throw him in jail for a pair of headphones. He, and and the kid said that he was willing to work with them and figure out what went wrong and they said no. I think in this case Apple was wrong. Uh, or the, the 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 store manager was wrong and they should, since he's a kid. Come on. He yeah. has a three thousand dollar laptop. Are you really gonna throw him in jail for a pair of forty dollar headphones? It's not even just a principle at this point. It's it's, it's right. It's you have not a even trusting like, system. Right. It's not even like he just came in to rip them off or try to rip them off. He is an Apple user. He is your user base. He um you know, is using the Genius Bar. He probably has Apple Care on his MacBook. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was willing to pay for it when he figured out that it didn't go through. But they didn't even let him finish. They just called the cops. They threw him in jail for the night because apparently he lived in New Jersey, which is technically out of state because um, this was in New York. Mm-hmm. And so he had to spend the night in jail. And then he went to, um, I guess he went to court after that. And he's being, uh, he has to do like community service and pay a bunch of fines and and it's just like it's horrible it just gets worse and worse i i think he's planning on counter suing but i would i mean really uh, just super heavy um penalty for and i think he i think the story says that um after he got out of uh jail he actually went he's so he's banned from that apple store that that happened to he went to another apple store mm-hmm. used the easy pay app to buy those same headphones he was trying to buy because apparently he really wanted the headphones mm-hmm. and you know completed the transaction successfully at that store and went home with his headphones <laughs> he's obviously willing to pay could pay for the headphones 
there's not a problem there. He wasn't putting up a fight or anything, and he ended up buying them from another Apple store anyways. <sighs> Ridiculous. And uh, Come on. I mean, give the kid a break. Not, yeah. It, or anybody, really. I mean, you have, like I said, you have a trusting system. Sometimes the system doesn't work. And when you have a trust, when you put your product all over the place and say, people can check out on their own, and we trust you, well, the apparently benefit of the doubt has to go to the cu- on top of this, but you know, but he didn't even get out of the store, and there was a security guard and a manager there to meet him. I mean, apparently, it's not terribly trusting because they were on that. Don't like it. Uh, there's no NFC on the new iPhone, apparently. <clears throat> well, I mean, we don't. Okay, this is still kind of just all rumors and conjecture, True. but we don't know. I mean, we didn't really know for sure that it was going to be in there. We were just kind of getting our hopes up. Right. Well, based on on the the back, the uh, the metal used on the back, um, mm-hmm. there are people saying that there can't be NFC because that acts as a shield. Bottom yeah. line is that because of this, there can't be NFC. So that's the rumor right now. Whether or not Apple has actually fixed that problem somehow, um, we don't know. Uh, but but this is what's what's happening right now. Um, a nine to five Mac. Um, there's a quote here saying uh, this is from um, um, Anand. Oh, this is from this is from Anand Anand. Yeah, from Anand Tech. Okay, I didn't realize that when I wrote because I read it too fast. I can't had a busy day. It says given the primary primarily metal backside of the new iPhone, it's highly unlikely that NFC is in the cards for this generation. In fact, given the very little space at the top and bottom dedicated to those glass RF windows, you can almost entirely rule it out. And then there are some more uh, technical specs with that. But yeah. yeah. and, and but that- this, this makes sense because a lot of um, Android phones that have NFC or near field communications, Mage Tower, um, <laughs> The, their backs are plastic, you know. Yeah. Maybe they they finally got around to having glass fronts now, or because a lot of them had plastic all throughout. But they almost all still have plastic backs. Yeah. In even the um, the Nexus Seven, which has NFC as a plastic back, so that makes sense. That maybe you know they're not cheap. <laughs> you know, <they're, laughs> it's just a necessity to um, to be able to transmit. You know, because the near field communication the the antenna for that is incredibly low power and that's why um that's why it's you near have to field. get them right you <laughs> have to get them super close and usually you know even if they're just close it won't work you have to actually be touching it's such a low power um antenna that it it doesn't you know, it doesn't sense very far. So yeah. if it's got to go through metal, well, then obviously, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a hindrance. Well, I, uh, well, I, let's actually move on to the next one. Did I post this or did you? Because I saw it today, but I don't remember if I posted it or not. You the did, and it's fantastic. Okay. I love infographics and <laughs> uh, what is it? Not 9 to 5 Mac. Cult um, of Mac. Cult of Mac has a wonderful breakdown of all the iPhone 5 rumors we've, like every single one that we've seen and heard throughout the um, Apple blogosphere Mm -hmm. uh, to date. And, you know, the kind of percentage of um, reliability or um, how, how much we actually think it's going to be in the iPhone 5. So you've got, you know, the like the NFC and the bigger screen, better chips. Well, the more likely ones are the bigger screen, the better chip, the yeah. more RAM, better camera. Those are all pretty likely. NFC is looking less likely now. Um, New mini dock connector looks likely. Mini dock connector is likely. The headphone jack on the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, they say that it's going to have a more powerful processor, which is nice. Um, yeah, it'll probably have the uh, A5X, I think, that the uh, iPad 3 has. Mm-hmm. Uh, better camera. It looks about 50-50, according to this infographic. Uh, more than likely, we're going to get 4G LTE. Here's the thing, though. With all this stuff in here, mm-hmm. I'm wondering... Like, like, this doesn't have that ooh-ah factor. I mean, it seems to have a bunch of really cool things, but... Is this going to be the the iPhone five that I'm going to go? Wow, I've got the iPhone five because it's got. 
You a, will a once screen. you watch the keynote. Of course you will. <clears throat> After you watch the keynote, you will be like, I need this in my life. Uh, yeah, maybe. maybe. Later, you'll be like, you know, that wasn't such a big upgrade after all. But, of course, there could be other things in there that we don't know about. Well, that's true. That's the thing is, is right now, what what I was hoping for was NFC. Uh, but everything mm -hmm. else, like faster processor, the faster processor for me, I guess, is a big deal because the camera on the iPhone 4 is slow as hell. Yeah. I, um, a couple of days ago, I forgot what I was doing, but I wanted to take a picture and I and I slide the the thing because my phone was locked. I slide the camera icon up, and it's got the closed shutter. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting and I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. And I waited for about ten seconds before the thing finally opened up. And I'm like, come on. Um, everything else, uh, I don't know. The, the this isn't really bowling me over. Four G L T E maybe. Um. I'm on AT and T though, so I don't know how good their 4G LTE yeah, is. Yeah, I think they'll have. I think they'll have 4G, like you know, it has in the iPad 3, but it's not going to fix all the reception drop call problems that people are expecting it to. Mm. And uh, AT and T is trying to deny the vacation blackout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there was a report that, uh, like the Verizon report, somebody reported that AT&T was also having a vacation blackout for the dates of September 21st through the 30th, exactly like Verizon. Mm -hmm. And now today they put out another report saying, oh, they're trying to deny that, oh, that we're not doing that, that's not a thing, you know, whatever. <laughs> It says that there's um, one person, uh, one New York employee who's sitting out the first week of the iPhone launch, and he's going to be sitting online waiting to get one. Oh, I'm half kidding about that. So I, I, I don't know if they're just trying to do uh, damage control or not on that. but Oh, I'm sure they are. I yeah. mean, AT&T is, you know, pretty much... Well, I don't want to say Apple's bitch, but definitely <laughs> their buddy, you know, and so they can't afford to yeah. be the source of any kind of leaks. I just realized that the announcement is supposed to be two weeks from today. Yeah. So we'll be reporting Start on that. Kids. Well, so, okay. So if it's two weeks from today, they should have sent out invitations or maybe they're going to wait for a one week out. Maybe. But then people have to make travel plans. I know. It sucks for them. But then Apple, you know, they always do this. They they try to keep it as top secret as they can for as long as they can. Mm -hmm. Usually, I thought it was two weeks out that they actually send out the invitations and the announcement of the announcement. But um, maybe they're going to wait a week out. Yeah. I uh, <laughs> This is hilarious. I saw this today. T-Mobile sent out a memo, apparently. Saying sell against the iPhone the week that it comes out, September twenty first. Yeah, uh, new internal policy for T Mobile employees starting <laughs> September twenty first, oddly enough, uh to sell against the iPhone. Mm-hmm. Um on September twenty first, a grab and go will be loaded into learning plans and ELMS. I don't even know what is ELMS. That's probably their internal stuff. Okay. Um, probably like a learning center. Like Best Buy had uh, um learning center that you would they'd push down training videos and and materials through then you'd have to go and look it up and they'd force you to like go and do your training on it yeah i i read an article i didn't put it in the show notes because um i forgot to but i read an article about eh, maybe two three days ago that said that t-mobile is still trying to work with apple on getting the iphone and they can't they can't come to an agreement so I don't know what's up That's with that. That's fine. That's fine with me. Whatever. <laughs> we don't need you. <laughs> yeah, they need us more than we need them. Exactly. Uh, all right. So what's going on with these uh, MacBook Pro Retina displays? So we kind of thought this was going to happen anyways, and it looks like it is, uh, possibly sooner rather than later. Um, displays. Mm -hmm. Just the displays for a 13-inch MacBook Pro Retina have now begun production. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> if you were, you know, a 13-inch MacBook Pro user cursing the gods because you did not get a Retina and 15-inch users did, well mm. then, 
Here you go. Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> I guess that's that's a big deal for some people. I have a I, for some inch. people it was like I I know if I know I know two people closely that were um, on when the retina was announced in June. They're like, oh man, I would totally buy this, but I have a thirteen and I love it, and mm-hmm. I don't want to get a fifteen. Yeah, and um, and so I know there's people out there like I used to have a thirteen. Pro and I loved the hell out of it. I thought it was the perfect size and everything. Of course, I had the twelve-inch power book, and I thought that was the perfect size too. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I have a fifteen now, and you know it, it's it's bigger, but uh, you know it's not terrible. It's you know I'd still like it, the fifteen better than a seventeen. I wouldn't want a seventeen at all. But yeah. um, yeah. I mean, there's you know, like I said, there's people who who just love a 13 or love a 15 or love a 17 and then just wouldn't buy anything else sure all right let's move on to rapid fire uh i think you start with this one this week yeah so i came across this story like right after we did the show last week i was like (laughs) oh man um leaked iphone case just a just the case is apparently you can rent this just for the low low price of seven thousand eight hundred and ninety dollars per day. <laughs> so get out your credit cards, people. God, why would anybody want to do that? I know. Do you get a I coupon did. code for that? What if you get a coupon code? No, there's code? no Groupon for this. <laughs> Groupon. I'm sorry. There's no living social <laughs> deal of the day for this. You're gonna have to shell out the whole almost eight thousand dollars if you want to rent the case of uh, the new iPhone. <laughs> uh, I am a big uh, uh, a big fan. Oh God, I'm just like blanking on the tweet deck. God, I'm I'm staring at this thing that says tweet bot, and my brain just went. Bleh. I'm a big fan of tweet deck. I have been for a long time. I've always wanted apps that did uh, multiple columns and multiple uh, accounts, and and tweet deck really does it right. I've been hearing how tweet bot alpha for the Mac was supposed to be phenomenal. And mm-hmm. so I go to grab it the other day, and it wasn't downloading. And, and I click again, and it doesn't download. So I look at the source of the uh, of the website, and it said a ref equals quote quote, meaning there was nothing there. So mm-hmm. I wrote to um, I wrote to Tapbots, and I said, uh, "Derp, your thing is uh, broken." Well, it turns out because I was running around all weekend. I didn't see that they had already announced that they took it down. They took Tweetbot down because of Twitter's new rules, which yeah. are ridiculous. Yeah. Um, they're killing... I, I, let me, I almost wrote a third-party app years ago, and I'm so glad now that I didn't because I'd be completely screwed. But, um, yeah, they're, they're trying to weed out all the third-party developers. Yeah, so they're limiting the number of tokens mm-hmm. um, that third-party Twitter apps can use and since Tweetbot Alpha already so many people have downloaded it um, they're afraid they're going to run out of tokens and so they pulled the uh, and, and like, I mean it's just the alpha it's not even a beta or the full version um, and it's only it's not in the app store it's only available for download from their site or was anyways and yeah they had to pull it because they were afraid that they were going to run out of tokens they had been back and forth with Twitter um, you know pleading and trying to come to an agreement but Twitter wouldn't budge and this, these are their new rules mm-hmm. and you know they're they're just forced to abide by them which is yeah. which is sad and I think a lot of cool apps and um, I don't want to say innovators, but you know, third-party developers are are gonna yeah get screwed, and and we're sure. gonna get screwed as a customer because of that. Uh, you know, I yes, um, well, yes and no. See, here's the thing: is I use um, I use Tweetbot on my iPhone, and I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. It's God, a beautiful it's, Twitter app. It, it is, but that doesn't mean that that Twitter for the iPhone is bad. It's just that. Tweetbot took what Twitter had, the Twitter app, I shouldn't say Mm -hmm. the service, but the app, and really did some cool things with it. And the way they organized things and and displayed things and uh, everything just just makes the experience better. And so I like it a lot better. Um, But now the ability to innovate is is gone. 
uh, if they weed out too many of these third-party apps. Now, on the other hand, a lot of third-party apps are gone since the day of the first apps came out. Mm -hmm. um, there are some that just aren't around anymore. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen with, with Twitter. And now, have you heard of this yeah. app.net thing? Yeah, if you have to pay 50 bucks a I year to be 50 bucks, part of it. And no, to... I'm not paying 50 bucks to be part of an alpha. No. It's... No. um. It's to circumvent the need for ads or monetization on the platform. Look, um, since Twitter is introducing more and more ads into the platform, um, App.net is trying to take a different approach by actually charging a subscription fee so then you get it ad-free, which you know is a legitimate alternative I um, suppose. for people who are fine with paying um, money, but you know, of course, and there's also that community or market where people would rather just watch or or see an ad or two and get it for free, and, mm -hmm. and they're fine with that. So, I think this is more of a Nexicon type topic, but um, yeah, maybe we should talk about App.net. Not necessarily here, but I, I'm I'm just not a big fan. Look, there there are two failed, well, not failed, but but I should say unsuccessful. Um, Twitter clones. One was Diaspora, and um, but that I'm, was more of a Facebook competitor. Was it in the beginning? Mm -hmm. Because I okay, it and, was competing with Facebook. And uh, the other one was uh, because of an I. I'm um, um, uh, what was that one? The mm -hmm. open source one. Um, duh, 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 duh. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but but there was there was. Uh, I will Google it. <laughs> you do that. Uh, no, um, well, I talked, but there was another one. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. I can't find it. Well, while well, you're looking for that, yeah. I will move on. Apple patent hints at situationally aware iPhone settings. Love this. Now you put this in. What I is put this? this in. Okay. I might have mentioned on the show before. Uh, I mentioned it somewhere recently. When I had my last Nokia phone, mm -hmm. which ran Symbian, it had the ability for you to change your settings based on certain conditions. Now, there is no GPS in the in the thing, but you can say, at 8 o'clock, turn off my ringer. At 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. turn it back on. And so what that allowed me to do is just ha automatically have the phone on vibrate while I was at work, and then vibrate was turned off when I left. And so... It was a great system, which I have yet to see. I mean, can you do this on Android? Because you can't do it on the on the iPhone. You couldn't do it in WebOS. I don't know. Um, you can kind of do that on iOS six now with the Do Not Disturb. Um, True. Yes. But it turns it turns everything off, ringer and vibrate. Like my phone is silent. It doesn't. The display doesn't even turn on for notifications. It is dead from the hours that I put in there. Right. So, I mean, that's nice. I guess if you wanted dead silence during work, then you could do that. And as soon as you open your phone, you know, the the notifications are there and everything. But um yeah, um not like a more granular kind of uh just turn off this one thing. Mhm. Mm so, I think that this would be great um if it ever comes around. And yeah. it's, I'm surprised that now is this, um, this is a patent, right? Yeah, it's just a patent. So nothing in anything yet. I'm surprised that nobody else has done this, but you see, this is what I mean. This, this, this goes back to the original point about Apple and innovation. Maybe they, they didn't come up with the idea first because obviously it was in Symbian. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. But they, they're. Well, there's a lot of things that, that are like that. You know, they didn't invent the first MP3 player, but they mm -hmm. made the first really good, popular MP3 player that worked. You know, they did it right. I mean, they didn't inv invent the phone, but they made a really <laughs> damn nice one. Um, you know, they didn't invent the tablet, but it was the first really nice tablet that really brought that whole genre of gadget into being i mean it was it was kind of a joke genre up until then yeah so and a lot of times yeah they're not the first but 
damn if they don't do it right when they do do it. What's with the uh, the iPad Mini? What's going on with that? The what's the latest so rumor? So we're getting new rumors that up until now we thought that the the supposed iPad Mini um, was going to be announced with the iPhone five in September, mm-hmm. but now there's new rumors that there might be a second. Um, event in October for the iPad mini, which might be like their traditional music event where they uh, announce new iPods and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, So then the September event would be solely focused on, say, like iOS 6 and the iPhone 5, and then have a whole nother event for iPad mini and new iPods a month later. So then they can kind of, again almost a it makes sense so that they can really dominate the news you know if they spread all their their cool new stuff out Mm -hmm. you know further then you know because they i mean real realistically they only need a new iphone to dominate the news for you know two or three weeks (laughs) that's true and then if they announce a new ipad oh that gives them another two or three weeks of dominating the news Mm mm-hmm so, um, and who yeah. knows if they're going to come out with anything else because Tim Cook said that for the entire year they're going to have new stuff coming out. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes sense. Um, so that might be a thing. Mm-hmm. TiVo is coming out with a stream iOS transcoder box September 6th. Yeah. I am not happy about, I mean, I'm happy about the fact that you can stream to your iDevice, but I'm not happy about the fact that you have to buy a $130 device in order to do it. You have to have the TiVo Premiere in order to be to make this box work. Yeah, so I you have, have to have two TiVo boxes. I have a TiVo Premiere. Oh. Why do I, what I don't understand is that the can't they make the Premiere? I, maybe they couldn't. I suppose. I mean, TiVo is a bunch of smart people. Oh, you just people. don't want to buy another box. Yeah, why should I have to buy another box? Yeah. Because no, that I I agree with. This should just be a service or. I don't know, a new like main TiVo premiere box, but not like a secondary box. Like how many freaking boxes well, do I need in my entertainment center? Here's the thing. I mean, you you can it, get an app for your Mac that will suck down shows from your TiVo. Mm-hmm. All right. The TiVo by itself does some sort of encoding. So the mm-hmm. question that I have is, if you can if you can suck down a file, if you can suck down a show as a file, there is your stream. The TiVo does encoding. Why do I need another box for this? Why do I need to drop $130 on a box? Well, people have been doing this for years already. It's called the... Bah, I just blanked on the name. Oh, my Roku. God. No. Oh, Slingbox. Slingbox. Thank you. I was just about to say it, and just as the words were going to come out of my mouth, they disappeared. Um, Slingbox. This is exactly what Slingbox does. Mm -hmm. And so it's obvious that TiVo has probably been wanting to capture that market and um, keep it within their, you know, ecosystem. And so yeah, there you go. Here's their solution. I'm still trying to find the name of that damn open source Twitter client and I I can't. <laughs> well, good luck. Oh, that's just so funny. No, because I it's um it's like at the tip of my tongue. Obvious. And I I can't seem to find it and I can't remember the name. Well, in any case, Apple is planning to upgrade AirPlay to work without Wi-Fi. That's amazing. Um I've heard some what was it? Airplay Arc or some crazy uh, code name for it, which probably won't stick. But um, yeah, it looks like they're working on a new, um, I don't know if it's going to use Bluetooth or what, but to do, you know, Air. I mean, Airplay is, especially if you're pushing, now with Mountain Line, you can mirror your whole desktop to your Apple TV. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of pushing a lot. So if you're doing that without Wi-Fi, this needs to be pretty reliable and quick and, you know, be able to support that. I mean, yeah, I I don't don't understand why they need to go (laughs) away from Wi-Fi. Everybody has it. Mm -hmm. So it's already built in. Like why? 
try and create your own infrastructure when there's already a perfectly good one sitting there? Yeah, I'll have to think about that because I can't say, look, everybody's got Wi-Fi and, and that's what you piggyback off of. So unless, are you in a house yeah, without but, Wi-Fi? No, Apple's going to recreate Wi-Fi to make it <laughs> faster and better looking and it'll hey. be the best damn Wi-Fi you've ever experienced. Well, don't laugh because... I still have holes in the ceiling in my in my garage from when I was trying to drill holes for wiring my house, and then a couple months later, Wi-Fi came out by Apple in the airport. Oh, yeah. So they may innovate. And, yeah, and once your again. world was never the same. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I actually wrote to Steve. I said, "Wow, this is awesome." <laughs> he never wrote back. He didn't say, "Yep." Yes. No. Yes. Indeed. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Steve. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Apple employees get 50 gigabytes of free iCloud storage space. And then I guess you wrote WTF after that? Yeah, what the heck? I'm trying to make it work with five and they've got 50? Well, they're employees. <laughs> no wonder they're, you know, trying to build more data farms just to freaking accommodate all the employees. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know what I have. I think I have 20 gigabytes or 20, 25. What do we have? I don't oh, even you use it. For the 25? Yeah. Oh. I, well, I, I mainly, yeah, I, I did. I forgot what I paid for. You know, the thing is, it's, it's one of those things, you know, that, uh, that, um, thing that says here, just take my money. Yeah. Yeah. It's me. Uh, <laughs> 24.38 gigabytes of 25 gigabytes available. Yeah. You, you okay. paid for the 25. I'm still trying to clean up and reorganize and you know make use of the five gigs that i'm right there i might have to pay for the when the iphone 5 comes out i think i might yeah. have to do that all right moving on to culture i have two things actually to say about this um huh. so my mac pro died the one that i've been complaining about you don't say yes the video card went and um so it was it was time to get a new computer, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to. I've been saying the entire time that we've been recording this show that I I wanted to wait for a Mac Pro next mm -hmm. year, and I, I guess my my Mac just gave in, and the video card is dead, and um, that's it, it's gone. So I went to Apple the next day, and I bought a new iMac begrudgingly. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to spend um, all that money on a Mac on a new Mac Pro, which is like doesn't even have i7 in it. Um, and so I set the whole thing up, and everything was fine. I have because of the, my video card was shot, I couldn't do anything except put my Mac in target disk mode, mm -hmm. and so I can get access to the hard drives. And so I've been copying everything over. Yes, I know that I can do the um, migration assistant. But because there's some things that I did want to copy and some things that I didn't, I just figured it'd be easier for me to just pull everything that I felt that I needed and then I could put the hard drives away. At some point in the future, if I find something that I, I forgot, I'll just throw it in that USB. I have one of those USB hard drive docks and I'll just grab it yeah, over that yeah. way. So that's been fine. This machine screams compared to my old one. My old one, if I if I fired up Google+, Plus, you can hear the hard drives going, please stop. Stop! It hurts. <laughs> this machine is like ah, it's nothing. Well, yeah, it should. Which I expected. I mean, I've, yeah. I've I have a um, I have a um, MacBook Pro Core 2 Duo, still not an i7, but it it worked a hell of a lot faster than my old Mac Pro. Um, but I needed to have uh, um, a desktop machine, mm -hmm. and so I love the thing to death so far except i had to buy a um a thunderbolt external drive because this this machine only has one terabyte drive in it and i missed the hard drive bays so i think my hard drive bays took up four gig and i know one of them had one terabyte i'm sorry four uh four terabytes had one terabyte free on one drive and so I just bought a three terabyte drive, hooked it up, and everything is working perfectly now. Um, it hums. It's, I don't. I don't mean it like it makes noise. It's just, it's just very very fast. This is what a machine should be. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. the um, the other problem that I had with it is that the Mac Pro had two output ports. It had a line out and a headphone jack, 
And mm-hmm. this machine only has a line out jack, but I needed a headphone jack for podcasting and Google uh, Google Hangouts so that people don't hear what's coming out of my Mac. Mm-hmm. So I had a, uh, I had one of those old Griffin iMic adapters where it, it goes oh, from USB. Y? Yeah, so it goes from mm-hmm. USB to headphones. It works. It sounds like crap, though. It yeah. sounds like... And today in New York, we have the Andrew Sisters at Radio City Music Hall. I mean, it sounded that yeah. bad. It sounded awesome. like old AM radio. And I was like, all right. So I ordered... Our friend Langley um, has one of the newer Griffin iMic adapters. He says that it works great. So I ordered one from Amazon. It's on its way. Um, so I'm trying to get this whole podcasting setup working. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to that story, I just want to mention real quick about this. Um, it's not on the show notes, but um, the problem I had uh, that Sunday, the other day, when I, when I bought this thing, is that I had no music. So I'm working around the house and I've, I'm like, I've got my CDs, but I have my playlists and everything like that. I had no way of playing it. So about half an hour after I got home, I just realized like, well, what if I tried doing this on Windows? Doing iTunes Match on Windows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and it wasn't just iTunes Match. I was working in the garage. Not only, obviously the Windows version of iTunes works with iTunes Match just fine. That was expected. What I didn't realize is that the Windows version of iTunes actually talks to the airport devices so i was able to i didn't know that because i never had to use it um and so i was able to stream my music to the garage where i was working i was like this is the reason why people love the apple ecosystem try doing that with google yeah i know i've been doing the um airport expresses with speakers all over the house uh long before sonos was a thing and Mm -hmm. and even after sonos is a thing i always told people you know Sonos is nice, but it's also really expensive, and you can do the same exact thing with a few Airport Expresses and a pair of speakers. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm the owner of a shiny new i7 iMac, which means that I'm sure that they're going to announce a new one in 15 days. (laughs) Yep, 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 yep. The woman at the store was very helpful. She says, you have two weeks to take it back. But if if it happens to be within 30, you're like, well, you know... Unless you come out with something amazing, like if they come out with a with a Mac uh, with a Retina display, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to take this I back don't for think, a Retina yeah, display. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen for a while. And in fact, this thing's got a it's a uh, uh, 3.4 gigahertz i7, um, which mm-hmm. can be throttled up to 3.8, I believe. Yeah. Um, so unless they come out with something like a 4.2, which I don't think they're gonna, because I don't even think that exists. What's the what's the fastest yet. i7 you can get now? Um, even Ivy Bridge with um, Turbo Boost won't go that high. It's like just below four, I think. Still. Yeah. So I don't really expect to uh, to get rid of this thing for a while. But my other computer lasted almost seven years. Um, I was yeah. I was just waiting for a, a Mac Pro Thunderbolt. That's why I hung on to that thing for so long. But mm-hmm. as soon as I heard a Thunderbolt, I knew that Apple was going to put it in. Um, but wow, what a difference this thing makes. And now I don't have to worry about certain things like my disc too slow errors in GarageBand or anything like that. I don't have to. The only thing is um, I have to order RAM for it because uh, it, it came with four gig. Four gigs, yeah. In the store. But I know even with four gig, this thing is still screaming. Well, like, it's not Macs lagging. are always more efficient with, um, with RAM. Yeah. Um, there isn't anything at all that leads me to believe and i've been doing computers for a long time when this thing hurts when when a computer hits virtual memory you can tell because you you can you can feel it this thing if if it's hitting virtual well i mean mac os 10 is always always has virtual memory on but you know what i'm talking about where it has to like take an entire thing and like dump it to the hard drive yeah like when you launch photoshop or something like that i haven't seen that happen yet it's like i guess I don't know. I'm very, especially when I'm in Photoshop or Illustrator or a heavy program like that that's really memory heavy, I'm very, very digilent uh, about um, saving to the hard drive. Mm -hmm. Like, I'll make a couple changes and, you know, command S, command S. Me too. So so then it it runs, you know, I don't have a hanging when I'm doing a a brush tool or, or, you know, rainbow wheel whenever. I mean, um, because Illustrator used to just run so slow, and so I just got into the habit of, you know, saving every couple of minutes or seconds, and and then you don't really have to 
A, worry about it crashing and, and not having saved, but also, you know, it helps the program just run a lot smoother. Yeah. There is one last thing that I, I forgot to, to mention about this. Um, the machine came with Lion, and I wanted to put Mountain Lion on it. Mm-hmm. And so the way that I am is that I don't want to do an upgrade. Even though it's a clean machine, I just feel better doing um, a clean upgrade, uh, a clean install rather than a, an upgrade. Uh-huh. And so I had to install Mountain Lion on something that I could use. Well, I've got USB drives all over the place, but they always have a, they all have a purpose. <laughs> and so, like this is these are my documents that I wrote, and these are the you know my my projects uh-huh. backups and such. And so I had <laughs> fun. Funny enough, uh, the the one. Uh, the one thumb drive that I had uh, available was the one that came with Rift, the collector's edition. Oh. It was eight gigabytes. But for some reason, my machine, both Mac and Windows, would not format it. It was like stuck in this weird state where uh, when you fire up um, a disk utility and you look at the partition, you know how it'll just it'll just have like boxes and it'll say untitled one, untitled two. Uh-huh. It said untitled but it was highlighted in bl- three quarters of the box was highlighted in blue and one quarter of the box was not highlighted at all. I've never seen that in disc that's, utility no, before that's, ever. Really? That's the data that's on it. No, no. but usually when you when you look at the the single partition, it's not yeah. highlighted in blue. It's just white. This was highlighted. Well, quarters- yeah, but the content that's on it, like if it's if that white box is filled, you know, say the drive is 50% filled yeah, it, it'll be colored in with blue, fifty percent. Oh, I, well, this was this said that there was nothing on it. Well, that then was the it's weird clearly thing. lying. There to was you. There, there was something wrong with it, and I stuck them in my Windows machine, and Windows basically said, oh, "I don't know what to do with this. There's something wrong with so it." So even if you went into Disk Utility and changed the um, partition map, everything. It I tried formatting it in Windows. I tried for, uh, with a Windows format. I tried um, formatting it in Mac Journal. I put it on my Windows machine and I tried formatting it no, there, like, and I couldn't do anything. You do the whole partition map. Did that like, too. Go back in. Oh, okay. Everything that, and and every time, I, um, every time I tried to eject it, it sat there for thirty seconds and wouldn't eject. That sounds like a piece of crap, and you should throw it away. I did. So anyway, okay. um, I bought this Kingston. I'm showing it to the camera. Look how small these eight gigabyte flash drives are. They're tiny. They're like chiclets. Yeah. And I put Mountain Lion on and it worked fine. Well, good. The instructions are really easy. Um, but it, it's just strange having an entire operating system on this tiny little thing. Well, you've you've seen the um, the Lion USB that they were selling. Yeah. Instead of the disc, it just this little flat, teeny tiny piece of plastic. Yeah, nice. All right, our apps for the week. Before we go, yes. Uh, one thing that I've been really bugging about for a while is that Logitech, as great of a company as they are, and as great as products as they as they have, have crappy software, if not non-existent software for the Mac. And so, yeah. uh, if you're watching this video. I'm on a C920, Logitech C920 camera. The problem is that they don't have any Mac software for things such as turning autofocus on and off, white balance, anything like the brightness and things like that. Mm -hmm. You can't change it on a Mac. You're stuck. So uh, somebody went out and actually wrote an app for this. I I, I was looking for something today because on my... Is this what they, um, they were talking about on Mac Break Weekly? I don't know. I, I was just certain. Right, the, the, I think Andy and Nako's pick either this week or last week was this. But go was ahead. it? Oh no, because I've been. I haven't watched Mac Break Weekly in like a month. I've oh, been okay. bad. Sorry, but um, I would. The, the story goes that me and Eric Rice and Langley were all trying to figure out how to do this. And about a month or two ago, I found an open source library or, or something, some app that mm-hmm. allowed you to do it. And when my Mac crashed, I wanted to try and get that back. So I was doing a Google. You do a Google search for Mac software, Logitech C920 or something like that. And all you get are complaints from people on the Logitech forum saying, why don't you have software? It was like on page five of a Mm -hmm. Google search. Somebody had put in, there's this app on the App Store called Webcam Settings for eight bucks. And it allows you to do everything that you can do on Windows. And it's great. 
Yeah, and I think it works with any webcam, right? Even the built-in one or plugged-in yeah. one or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I didn't know. I, I, or this was what yesterday, uh, last week's uh, MacBreak Weekly. It was either last week or this week's, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Andy and Not Co had this as his pick, and he was demonstrating it on the podcast, like oh. in live live time changing his own webcam settings you know like blowing himself out with the white um you know or going into crazy colors um it it's pretty awesome and i think yeah anybody who's a podcaster or anybody who just uses a webcam a lot for really anything should have this all right so it's called webcam settings you can find it on the app store the mac app store Mm -hmm. awesome and yours? So my pick is Puzzlecraft. It's a stupid, silly game that I am now addicted to, and it's uh, I I hate to say it. It's it's a little bit Farmville-y, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's kind of like We Rule too. If anybody has ever played those games, where you build up a town and you you know build your buildings and you have little workers and everything. Um, but in order to get them food or, or grow crops or achieve anything really in the game, you have to complete puzzles, um, which are kind of like a Tetris style uh, puzzle game. And you do that to get resources uh, for your town and, um, and then, you know, earn money and stuff. And then there's like a little auction house and you can sell stuff on that and stuff like that. It goes all through the, um, the game center on mm-hmm. iOS. Um, just a silly little addictive game that you know I'll check in a couple of day a couple times a day and be like oh okay I collect my taxes from my peoples and uh, you know whatever, <laughs> um, but yeah it's I think it was like one ninety nine it's cheap and it's silly and it wastes a lot of time so there you no, go it doesn't uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's going to be it for this week. If you want to contact us, I am at. Star Mike Casey is at Casey Queso, K A C E Y K A S O, the Casey, not the cheese. Uh, you can email us, the Infinite Loop Show at gmail.com, Infinite Loop TV on Gmail. We're on the FB and we're on the Goog. And uh, I think you're so that... hip with your shortening of names. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. All right, adios. Until next week, peeps. Bye. And stop.